my screen. Here we go. So, yeah, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, are you recording, Bas? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so that uh, <laughs> Path can take a look afterwards. Uh, I think Checkout V2 is finished, at least the first iteration. And uh, today I wrote some more tests. I'll continue with that tomorrow. But in general, I think we're done, for, at least for uh, the first iteration. As I said, Destruct also had a look at it earlier today, uh, fixed some uh, yeah, minor styling issues or pushed some pixels. And as you can see, all the checkboxes here in that rather long issue are uh, checked. Uh, maybe if I get to it, I'll um, also fine tune the plugins integration. Nevertheless, uh, Destruct and I had a call earlier this week, and we said um, if we can find the time to improve it further, it'd be OK to uh, ship it as it is, and we'll keep on iterating there. Uh, we have some ideas how to improve it. Nevertheless, uh, once more, <laughs> the checkout PR uh, grew quite big by now. And I think uh, it's ready to be merged or uh, to be reviewed and um, yeah, then merged. It's mostly design fine tunings and um, copy improvements in this pull request. Uh, I also separated out the, um, the copy for Checkout V2 before it was uh, <laughs> um, uh, intermingled with the translations we had for Checkout V1. And I uh, made a clear cut because when I talked about it with Path, we also decided that the first iteration of Checkout V2 will be English only. That's OK, because it's an opt-in feature anyways. And once we fine tuned the copy, we'll have it translated and then yeah, ship it in uh, whatever languages are translated with uh, version 1.8. Yeah, I oh, think. Uh, Dennis, yeah. Uh, ref Refresh the pull request. I dropped stuff for discussion for today, but I realized that I guess maybe I didn't press send. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, let me see. Where is it? There it is. It'll be at the bottom. Yeah. It was just kind of an aggregate of uh, the open questions that you and I had um, that we could bring to the group and basically just the things that I see it, at least at the moment, um, that are potentially worth discussing or making that call. Um, I guess maybe Pav, when he finally reviews this, he'll have, um, he might have some comments on some of these things as well. Cause I think that that was the main thing of like what other bigger issues or, you know, something like the, the address stuff. Um, <clears throat> um, if, if any of that was going to hold up release, um, or getting this, this, this MVP out there. Yeah. Um, so with regards to this carrot asset, we don't have it anymore on the on the um, checkout v2. It was there right, before right. for the back button, uh, yeah. but now that the form integration uh, happens another way, uh, this one's completely gone, and uh, we don't have to care about that. Um, the QR code borders are already rounded. I think you can. Oh, I meant on the the actual. Uh, I don't know what the best way. It's like yeah, we have the container. Um, ah, okay, I see. But yeah, like gen, gen, the generation mm -hmm. of the QR code. Uh, yeah, as SVG itself, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like a sub rounding. I don't know if I know. I know we can control that, but I don't know if we want to or if we want to get into any of that or whatever. But you know. I'm talking about pixel pushing. That's definitely a little a little area where we could round those off even more, but it's it's very very minor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so what's the third point here about displaying addresses via a copy button? Uh, that was kind of uh, to extend on what you and I had chatted about, yeah, which yeah. 
obviously not displaying that by default, um, but I wanted to bring it as to the group as a potential solution of like, yeah, maybe it's, it's a button um, and similar to whether it's an accordion or something that's like a more of a modal overlay, um, you know, maybe, maybe it, it gives us an area or a space to uh, propagate with, you know, all the various addresses, um, you know, node info, et cetera, et cetera, whatever we eventually feel is important. Um, but yeah, that's, and it, it would probably live as like maybe uh, one fourth of the size of maybe, you know, pay and wallet, and it would go to the potentially left of that. I, I could see something like that working. Um, um, but yeah, I don't know. Wanted to, wanted to pose it as an option because I, I could see the lack of address potentially being the most controversial thing that we've got going on here um, for the time being. And then maybe the payment method stuff being secondary because I'm sure we'll just run into issues regardless, uh, you know, as it's such a new thing. And there are a lot of variants there. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so this was the uh, last outstanding thing uh, we wanted to discuss. Um, and yeah, when we spoke earlier this week, our thought was, well, maybe now that we are um, <laughs> on a on a uh, completely uh, greenfield checkout view, uh, we have the chance to be as minimal as possible, and we uh, can have an approach where we try to <laughs> uh, um, ship this initial version without showing any kind of address, so uh, without the Bitcoin address or the bold eleven, and. If people start to complain that they miss it, we can reintroduce it. But we'd like to um, have this approach rather than shipping it and then potentially taking it away because the latter will be uh, harder. And yeah, then people might obviously start to complain where has this gone and so on. It's probably sufficient to ship with, and we can keep collecting feedback. Um, you know, it, it is a clear uh, call to action with the text, and I had debated that when I was looking at stuff last night. Um, if if it should be above the QR code, you know, that little scan to I forget what the copy is off the top of my head, but it's like you know, uh, click to tap or whatever, or tap to to copy the um, address. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, scan the QR code or tap to copy the address. I mean, it's a pretty clear CTA. Um, I mean, I, I could see, I was debating if it was get lost, having it be potentially below the QR code, but I just feel like because it is so minimal, like you were mentioning, that like there's not a whole lot going on. And I, I think that, you know, once you read that once, you know that that's a possibility and, you know, it's easy enough in both cases. And the um, certainly on desktop, you know, for all of these things, the uh, the cursor changes um, you know, and maybe, maybe there's more things that we could potentially do to push that or make that a little bit more clear. But I just think that for a V1, um, implementation of all this, I think it's, it's solid enough, um, for us to not have to worry too much about, uh, worry about that, but that's, that's my intuition. And worst case, you know, we get told that it is like, maybe there's some stuff that we could do on like hover, uh, or, you know. We, and we can address some of those issues more specifically on mobile because that's typically where I would think we'd probably have more issues um, than maybe even desktop. But I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to me, it um, feels kind of like we uh, the discussions we had when we um, did redid the whole uh, store centric UI. And I think you can discuss and theorize until a certain point, and then you have to ship and see what people think. And from, from my point of view, um, I'd, I'd like to try shipping this and see what people think, especially as this is an opt-in feature. And um, if it doesn't work for, for people, uh, they can tell us about it, switch back to the old one. We'll ship uh, a minor new version with um, iteration improvements, and then they can try again. Yep, I, I, I agree. If anybody else feels strongly, uh, please feel free. <clears throat> I had one question. Uh, was it a certain 
is there a certain reason the logo is not within this white box uh, containing the invoice? It's probably just just a matter of choice, but it looks a bit off. Yeah, I think um, I mean, that's that's a great question. Um, I think we had explored some iterations, and I think some of the early stuff had that. Um, I think the only time I think this is the only instance where it sits as like an overlay on top of things, um, where it does become a bit of an issue. But it is interesting to see it um, in this context, where you know it's on a payment request or a pull payment or something like that. Um, and yeah, that could be. I guess that could become a potential issue, but it you know it'd be easy enough to add it uh, if we really needed it there. Um, but I just think it came down to a matter of subjective preference, not that there was like a very specific, uh, like this has to be outside of this. Um, I think we're just kind of containerizing things where it's like this is very specific to the uh, invoice itself versus like, you know, the store being a separate thing. Um, but yeah. it's, it's a valid point. Just thinking along the lines of having this included with the JavaScript model, it could be over anything showing it off the, off the website in the background, and that could be a bit of noise created uh, throughout the logo. That's a good point. That is a really good point. Um, yeah, I mean, for something like that, uh, definitely not opposed. Uh, like I said, it's it's not a, like it has to be this way or like this is the only way to do it. It's more just kind of that's how things shook out. But uh, that is a really good point. And I guess I can think about the fact that if people are like hacking on this, you know, and adding it to new projects and stuff. Like you said, maybe there's a, you know, crazy background or, you know, it's like a, a rock star, a rock star hairstyle, <laughs> you know, plug in or whatever. Um, yeah, that might, that might become a bit of a problem. Um, but, you know, I, I think kind of like some of this other stuff, the scan, the QR code copy, it, it would be an easy enough patch. Um, but yeah, we could, we could certainly, uh, see um if, if we have any issues with that but i'll, I'll take that down as a note because like yeah that might become a lot more relevant um in the coming weeks <clears throat> other than that the testing went really smooth so i looked at uh, this edition here as well and uh, i mean i had one issue with the which i reported which already got fixed really quickly really happy about it i think i might actually use it for my <laughs> my little <laughs> storefront <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I think um, the reason for it being uh, that solid is that we are working on this for, well, maybe uh, two months now. And uh, so <laughs> I yesterday I uh, wrote in the chat that I can't see any more checkout screens. <laughs> and uh, I'd, I'd just like to ship this by now because I, uh, my impression is that we can talk about it uh, for four weeks and we'll not have not do any more major improvements until this hits uh, the road and we get actual user feedback. Yeah, I completely agree. It's diminishing returns for sure. And I think, yeah, even when you and I chat, yeah, we're getting down to the nitty gritty of, you know, pixel pushing, um, we, you know, which is a great thing. And, and obviously those little incremental changes matter. Uh, but I agree, like, we're not going to get, we're, 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 there's going to be things that we might not even see as potentially obvious um, by the time it gets out there, or maybe people will love it. And it's like, yeah, this is exactly what I need. Or yeah, like something like the address thing just becomes such a glaring issue for people. Um, you know, yeah, or, or the the point that you just brought up about the logo sitting outside of the container itself, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah, I, I wholeheartedly support that as well. I think that it, it, it's time. Um, as long as everything functions the way that it's supposed to, um, which it seems like it does, because I've also been doing a good bit of testing. And, you know, yeah, we'll find <laughs> all the support issues and all the various problems that come along with the BIP21 stuff as well. And, you know, if people get all upset about the multi-payment, blah, blah, blah stuff as well, how, how well that actually holds up to. So, yeah, entirely support. <clears throat> but, yeah. Great work. I, I know it feels like it's been a while for this, but I, I, I also feel that way. It feels very solid. It feels like we've we've tried to address everything we can, and I'm sure people will be happy and also unhappy. <laughs> so, you know, never going to please yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, to me, this feels like quite an improvement to what we have with uh, the existing checkout, which hasn't been touched in years. And uh, so I'm really looking forward uh, to the feedback we'll get. And of course, there will be uh, valid 
things we can take into consideration and have the uh, opportunity to improve this even further. But I think uh, this works way better than what we have with Checkout V1. Oh, definitely. It's still an opt-in feature. So if somebody doesn't like it, they can still switch back to the old and to maybe whatever they made themselves by now. Uh, so yeah. for first couple of weeks, it would be really nice to see some uh, some people give us some more feedback on this. Uh, but overall, really, really well done, guys. Really well done. Looks really good. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Cool. Uh, Dennis, I, I have a question regarding the, um, the, the 1.7 release. Um, so for 1.7, with this new, new checkout uh, UI, um, do you also plan or we we plan to also include the forms integration because on my local environment i'm i'm not sure if that's if that's the case um uh, i haven't tested it today but uh I, I i remember checking yesterday or the day before um if you select like uh you know before checking out and when you create an invoice before checking out um if you select asking for details uh, like email or address, then you get like a, um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember exactly the text, but you get a prompt saying that, you know, you have to fill in something like a form, but then, but then you don't get any form in the flow. Yes, exactly. Uh, so with the current state on master uh, where the, first pull request for checkout v2 uh, has been merged. Um, there was still the idea that we'll integrate the forms into the checkout flow. And um, since then, um, Cooks um, updated his form builder branch with which, uh, which he's working on in parallel uh, right now. Um, and he um, modified it so that um, the forms feature and the checkout view necessarily don't have to be related. So um, we we can use them independent of each other. And um, his branch is still based on what's on master currently and not integrated with uh, what's in the PR version I uh, I showed here. So uh, this checkout fine tuning uh, PR is uh, is based on <laughs> on the uh, on the first PR that already got merged. Uh, and in this PR, I completely threw out everything uh, that's related to the forms on the checkout view. So um, if you want to uh, test the the um, forms feature, how it's going to uh, end up in version 1.7, you have to uh, check out Cook's branch. Right. I, 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 remember, pulling, uh, I remember pulling this PR um, and it didn't make any difference, uh, actually. But, but that was a couple of days ago. Uh, maybe I should recheck it. Uh, we can... Uh, I can I can show you the flow. Uh, uh, I can I just... confirm the form builder is there in the back end, but on the front end side for the user, it's not really visible. Um, I tried it this morning and wasn't successful. Yeah, give me a second. I'll check out his PR and uh, rebuild. Uh, because I reviewed it yesterday and uh, for me it was working as intended, at least for um, for the features he mentioned here. So it's uh, not yet integrated into the invoice, but it's integrated into the payment request and uh, uh, into into the apps. OK, that I'll, could I'll have been the issue. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I haven't tested the, the payment request, so, so that, that might be the case. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me demo it real quick now that we are talking about it. On, on that note, um, for the invoice thing, because maybe I missed it because um, I haven't rewatched the the dev call or I guess the one that was like a week or so ago. Um, 
the form builder stuff is it just because there's uh, a decent amount of work still to be done in order to ship it for 1.7 because uh, i was wondering how we reached the conclusion that that was uh that we should leave that off like it certainly makes some of the feedback a little bit easier but i also think from a i guess a feature scope perspective um you know having having that form builder and having the, that like you know previous step to enter all that metadata um, is definitely a huge thing, which obviously will be exciting to release or announce, even if it's 1.71 or whatever. Um, no, no, I... uh, we, we are going to ship this with uh, 1.7. And that's also one of the reasons why I uh, want to um, draw draw a line under uh, the uh, checkout v2 PR, because I'll have to uh, find the time to um, review uh, this PR in particular um, and help cooks with stuff because as you can see there this one also grew really big and uh, there there are still uh, many open points we uh, we have to address and if we want to ship next week uh, <laughs> I I can continue uh, working on on both uh, things. Uh, I see. Okay. Okay. I, I was a little bit confused. I thought we were we were delaying that for that reason. I, I, that's that's fine. Um, which I I can understand because I I also took a look at the PR um, whenever I was reviewing it and like yeah, code wise it's definitely quite massive. Um, I guess even feature wise too. Um, it's, it's a it's a pretty large one. Um, okay. Cool. Well, I let me know if there's anything that I can do to to help. Um, at least on the front end side of things. Um, if there's any pixel pushing or whatever. But yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, let's create a payment request where we ask for the, sh uh, the shipping address. So uh, first of all, you got to fill out the form if uh, there's data to be, uh, to be added. And afterwards, um, now that the data is entered, You can pay the invoice. As you can see, this uh, is still the uh, the older version of Checkout V2 uh, that that was on Master. And if we now go back to um, to the payment request details. Uh, you can you can see the data that has been filled here and things like that uh, yeah <laughs> need to be uh, prettified a bit. Yep, I agree. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, as I said, he's he's working on on that in parallel and uh, we'll yeah uh, prettify this a bit and. Um, Tackle the remaining technical tasks he um, he has with the to do list here, and once that's done, we can ship it with uh, one dot seven. I'll, uh, I'll I'll poke around as well and kind of keep doing some of the same things we've been doing to the checkout view um, and try to hit all the areas and edge cases where maybe we're we're missing something or like where it might be good to populate that data in the same way, you know, like the invoice detail view, all that kind of stuff. Just make sure it's all, um, we're, we're not missing anything or letting it slip through the cracks. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure whether or not this is the right time to already test it because, um, yeah, as you can see, it's, it's very rough right now. Uh, I think cooks has ideas for how to address all of these, um, to do, nevertheless, the flow might change quite a bit uh, from what's on the PR right now, and um, so I'd I'd start testing once uh, he he puts this into ready for review mode. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, then I'll uh, I'll start working on some of the the next set of things, website stuff, and uh, yeah, the minimal keypad view. <laughs> but cool, that's um, that's really exciting. That's awesome to know. I, at first, I, I when I heard that, I thought we were pushing some of this to one point eight or one, you know, one point seven one or something after the release. So this will be awesome. No, no, it's it's more like um, it turned out to be trickier than we expected because um, well, the the nitty gritty details are in a 
longer comment I wrote in the development chat where I laid out the different cases of um, how, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe you you have seen this comment. And it, it basically uh, boils down to that we um, don't want to um, have the form tied to the invoice because then uh, there, there are yeah, kind of edge cases that open up uh, now that we um, have the um, the forms with the invoice because then, well, do we start the uh, expiry timer uh, once we open the form? <laughs> that might be unexpected for for the user and. Uh, if we if we don't go down that road, um, that also be the case where the user would have the option to um, to uh, yeah kind of trick with the rate if we generate the invoice after the form has been filled because uh, that might take a while and so on and um, yeah <laughs> that's that's basically uh, why um, yeah why this list of uh, of things to do here and how to integrate it into each of these particular use cases uh, grew bigger than we expected. No, it makes sense. And you brought up a lot of really good points um, on that comment. Cause yeah, I saw it and that's kind of, that's why I initially was like, oh, it seems like there's quite a lot still to do. And I don't know how much had been done from a uh, code or technical side of things, but cool, cool. I appreciate the, uh, the clarification. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So um, for um, so for the to dos design wise or what you could uh, work on next, I think the POS stuff, uh, which will be the bigger topic for one eight, would be good, and then uh, the website so that we can also yeah uh, start start making progress on that front. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um... I think that makes sense. I mean, yeah, there's there's areas of like, I'm, I'm interested to hear everything that we, we scope out because I guess the, the keypad stuff could be one of the bigger issues. But then I guess with any of those things too, we have like the you know, store cleanup stuff or cart cleanup stuff and all that. But uh, yeah, I'll save that for another time when we kind of plan out uh, what might be in 1.8 because that becomes, yeah, a whole, like kind of a whole area of just improving the, uh, the front end side of all this stuff um, that people will use. Um, other than that, I don't think there's any more UI related stuff in, uh, in the milestone for 1.7. Yesterday I saw that, um, Path pushed this one to 1.8. Um, it's something I came across yesterday and I, yeah, yeah. fixed it real quick. I, I think it's, uh, it's a good improvement, uh, to the, uh, payment request list because it unifies it with the invoices list. I and, agree. Um, but I'm I'm also fine with uh, shipping this after 1.7. Yeah, I mean, well, at the moment you have you still have quite a bit on your plate as well. So yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't stress that either. But uh, yeah, I, I yeah, I just good. I just wanted to bring it up here because I think it's rather uncontroversial. It's uh, just UI related changes and um, yeah. It's yeah, it's uh, not that big like all the other PRs. No, definitely. I'll uh, I'll get a review in on that, but I, I think overall it should be pretty straightforward. Um, cool. Let's see. I'm trying to think what other things might be worth because like this might be the first time that we're <laughs> we're we're actually early. Usually we're running really behind. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. uh, are there any uh, things you you want to talk about or bring up with uh, regards to what's coming up after 1.7? Uh, not at the moment, because my focus has just been making sure that I'm not blocking you on anything or holding up this release. Um, so I've, I've, I've pivoted more to just jumping into, into the code and pushing around things in the editor to make sure that... Uh, it looks as good as it can. Um, so I, I haven't been in Figma working on the, the website stuff because that's what I'm hoping for the next call. Um, we can talk about the keypad stuff, the website stuff, and maybe, um, you know, maybe like one other smaller thing that has to do with like the, you know, the cart point of sale stuff or something like that. Um, that's uh, maybe just a little bit more pixel pushing that I can actually help um, with and that doesn't put as much strain on you. Um, but 
for today. No, not in particular. I just, I, I don't think I'm quite where I want to be with some of those things. <clears throat> um, I'm just trying to think. The only other major thing is like, yeah, I guess there's the multiple payment method stuff, but yeah, I think you covered it. It's like, let's get it out there. Let's see what people have to say. Um, you know, get the critical feedback and then we'll go from there and we can start to address that. I think one of the things I was telling you um, in DMs was just like better ways to potentially test or flag the multiple payment methods. But I know that that's, that's a whole, I don't know, there's a lot more involved in doing that kind of thing. But I think, you know, testing on that side of things is a bit tougher. Um, but I'll probably get an altcoin build running and, and try to see what I can do to make that work. Um, just because I want to, I want to keep poking around a bit more on that, because <clears throat> I, I just think mm -hmm. there's going to be more issues with that. Uh, but that's, that's that's a separate aside. Um, it, well, it it might have sounded trickier than it actually is. So um, in general, there are two things you uh, need to consider. Uh, da, 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 da. Here, this local development doc also has a section on how yeah. to how to run the altcoin build and it's it's just another version of the docker compose yeah, command docker. because uh, yeah this is uh, one thing you need to do and then you um i think are you also uh, developing in rider or uh, starting the uh, dot, uh, the app in in an ide uh yes i am Yes, and in the IDE, you also have to uh, to uh, set the configuration to use the altcoins debug. Um, I don't know what's what's it called. Uh, yeah, the altcoins debug configuration instead of just the debug configuration. And um, mm -hmm. those two things, and you are good. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. That that is more simple than I thought it was. Um... Uh, I thought I would I would have had to do more configure. Okay, then never mind. I'm gonna probably do that, and I might do some more tests this week. Then, if that's the case, I thought that was more involved. Um, yeah, and um, f for uh, for the stores, then you can also you will also see uh, the altcoins that are supported on uh, on the list of wallets. So um, you can just enable them there, and it should work. Oh, there, actually, that reminds me. I'll just file it as a bug, but there was one thing. I think I had uh, enabled uh, side shift and fixed float, um, and it shows, like, strange text, um, you know, on the Bitcoin-only build. Uh, but I'll, I'll just take a screenshot because I, I I think, or I might have even already had the screenshot, but uh, I'll post that. But I, I wasn't sure um, if that was a legitimate bug because I guess that's an actual use case where somebody might be using, um, you know, like side shift. You, um, you also, mean on uh, on the checkout uh, v2 view yes yes yeah um, uh, maybe you remember we talked about this also uh, earlier this week um, until da, 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 where is it um, until this is um, merged yeah. okay. PR okay. is merged it'll be tricky to test because you would have to uh, take the changes I did here and integrate the plugins uh, or the changes from this PR into um, your your local build and have the uh, yeah plugins um, separately in your dev environment and not installed from the store or the um, uh, not from GitHub because it's the old version which doesn't work with checkout v2 yet okay okay then yeah that's uh that that makes total sense i remember i just i think that's what i ran up against um and now i'm seeing w when we discussed that because i hadn't dug any further than that but i i, I now i it, it, it's all uh, a little bit clearer to me now <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts uh <laughs> yeah uh why, while we're talking about moving parts, one more thing I came across today is, and I might edit this tomorrow, is um, we have this section here uh, in case you want to opt into the new checkout. But um, outside of this area, which you can toggle open and which reveals the um, new options, there are also options that conflict with what we have in 
uh, check out v2 and it's not really intuitive to still show them uh, if if checkout v2 is enabled because uh, this is uh, uh, for instance this setting here is something that patch uh, came across yesterday where uh, he reported the bug um, that um, well basically <laughs> if you enable checkout uh, uh, v2 this setting doesn't uh, have effect anymore. And I'd like to change this UI to um, do the same thing as we uh, do on the, uh, I think, crowdfund or uh, point of sale uh, stuff where uh, on the edit view, where we just show the the settings that really apply for, <laughs> for uh, what's available. Because um, if you use check out v2 then also this requires a refund email setting makes no sense uh, yep. to ha have in here as well as the custom logo stuff which uh, <laughs> works totally different now and you configure the logo uh, over here and so on and uh, i i start cleaning that up and <laughs> i just need to find a way to uh, yeah not basically uh, <laughs> have the whole screen rearrange depending whether or not on yeah, yeah like not this this one is on or off. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I, that, that, those are really good points. I was wondering the same thing. Uh, I think the yeah, the more functional pieces like the requires a refund email and all that kind of stuff. I think are feel more uh, confusing. But maybe I guess I guess hypothetically we could do something, and it might end up being a bigger change. But something like the kind of what we were doing for I believe the API keys, which is like legacy. Um, uh you know or or kind of v2 type of thing um and maybe we could group it i think it's yeah or yeah yeah uh yeah you know, like legacy api keys and then the new tokens um it could yeah, be i also, like that. I also have some ideas on how to consolidate this once maybe uh checkout v2 is the only option and we remove checkout v1 um because then we could potentially have um, checkout and appearance kind of separated because right now um, the appearance related stuff is in here. And that's because, well, after yep. 1.7, this will apply to uh, all the public screens and not just the checkout uh, yep. uh, screens and so on. <laughs> it, I mean, there are so many moving parts uh, right now and uh, yeah. we, I'm, I'm looking uh, forward to how we can consolidate this and make it clearer uh, once uh, once we <laughs> settled the checkout V2 stuff. Yeah, I think that'll probably be a smaller issue, whether it's a 1.7 kind of thing that you and I kind of tackle along the way. Um, but I, I agree. And I was, it's funny because I was bringing that up like the, you know, I'm once again asking to rename uh, checkout yeah. appearance <laughs> to, to checkout. And then, yeah, we like, yeah, we kind of consolidate like appearance into, uh, you know, because it's relevant for this at a store level, it's relevant for a checkout type of thing. But I could see like checkout being the, you know, the overarching tab but then within that there is the appearance for specific checkout stuff um but yeah I, I agree there's there's more thought that needs to be put into some of this especially um you know now that we've kind of made a bit of a mess and i realized that yeah that it might confuse some people so hopefully it, people don't struggle too much with it but i think some of it's it's certainly more simple um but yeah i, I agree I, I i think with that kind of thing in my head mentally i see it as like legacy versus the newer situation and whatever we can do to where yeah like one one is on uh inherently the other is off or like maybe things are just you know disabled or no longer become relevant um and or even if it's just like sectioned off where it's like okay here's you know v2 up at the top you know v1 is underneath um i think that delineation alone would probably help alleviate some of the things that you just pointed out um but yeah cool uh, i'll uh um, I'll, I'll, we can chat and we'll work through that. Should be easy enough. Let's see. Okay. Well, so if we have that, we have the form builder. We'll clean up some of the admin stuff. I think the front end for the check in stuff is in a suitable enough place to release it. We'll get feedback and collect all that. Um, maybe we'll maybe we'll start another issue. You know, it's like you know check out uh, feedback and we'll just kind of collect what we get from people and we'll just route it all there like we did for the fine tuning stuff. Um, 
I think that's. I think we're probably good. I think that uh, I feel it feels like we're in a decent enough place to release it and keep collecting feedback um, without it becoming too overwhelming. Hopefully, okay. I say that as you know you're going to be working on Christmas dinner, Dennis. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but we decided in the def call as well, so he already knows. Uh, I'll be. I'll just be working on memes uh, that evening. <laughs> You're the meme maintainer now. That's what you should have been ground. Uh, well, um, is anything else? Because uh, I feel like you and I have just been going back and forth, Dennis. So apologies if anyone's wanted to jump in. But is anyone else see any potential issues uh, that we're we're not thinking about or um, tests, greenfield stuff, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Are we uh, in a good place? I think it looks good. Uh, the only thing that we also need to do is update our documentation, of course, for the checkout. Make sure that these options are there. Um, yeah, I thought about, about this a bit. Uh, yesterday too. Um, it's, I mean, the good thing is that we are shipping this as an opt-in feature, and so people might not really expect us to have docs because this might still change. Um, if you want to, uh, yeah, write a few sentences about it, I, I think it won't hurt. Nevertheless, I, um, I'm not sure, uh, if we should, um, go ahead, do screenshots of the back end and explain that because as we just talked about that area might, uh, might change a lot for sure. I think it's good to have it anyway, even though it would only be a couple of entries in uh, in the FAQ or something like that, um, or even go as far as create an experimental page where we also put what there is stuff, for example, down and just move it to the right spot whenever it is fully uh, finished. I think it would be good at least to add it um, and mm -hmm. you know uh, have that ready as well when we ship it. I'll yeah. do that. I had one not so serious idea for the form builder. Too bad it's not an April 1st feature. We could include a KYC feature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you you can uh, potentially hook into that uh, with a plugin and require the user to upload a photo of the passport and so on. Definitely. <laughs> and then you've reached BitPay quality. <laughs> <laughs> Go wash your mouth. Yeah, but uh, the uh, the confetti thing you brought up yesterday—that's uh, one thing I also have on my to-do list. This uh, will come for sure. Very nice. I'll send you a, a nice branch for a good confetti. I'm uh, I'm conflicted with that though because when I'm spending my sats on that kind of thing, you know, seeing the confetti, you know, I'm happy <laughs> using it, but I'm also sad that I'm losing my sats. So. I may not. I may not enable that personally. <laughs> You're not going to uh, have a choice. It will be a compulsory feature. <laughs> you will have confetti, and you will like it. <laughs> it's going to be either confetti or the doom sounds from back in the days, you know, or Unreal Tournament, one of the two. Uh, yeah, yeah, quake sounds. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I like it. In the crowdfund, we still have all of that. We have fireworks and uh, all the bells and whistles. Yeah, I don't think there's enough memes in, uh, in in payment processors and things like this. I definitely, yeah, we don't want to strip out all the fun of all these kind of things. A normal person needs to look at this and be like, what the fuck is going on here? I just sent internet or magic internet money. I'm hearing quake sounds. PTSD for my game. Um, one, one, one more serious thing that went through my head, um, how are we uh, letting users know that they are supposed to give us feedback? So I don't. I know putting a link on the payment form isn't, an, isn't really an option. We will send them to Telegram and Mattermost for you, my man. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, they're going to flood me. <laughs> well, depending on how it worked in the past, I'm sure we'll get uh, some some good feedback. Yeah. Uh, yes. I also just saw in your build, Dennis, that you added the donation uh, heart in the bottom, which is really nice. Looks good. Yes, <laughs> this also brought us to the topic that we we'll, uh, need to redo the website now that we are uh, linking there and uh, yep. want to receive some money. <laughs> 
it uh, it looks good in the bottom uh, yeah solid work again yeah that's that's one of the main features uh, for the upcoming release <laughs> <laughs> give us money yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right this sounds like a wrap up for today right <laughs> <laughs> is there anything left guys uh that needs to be talked about otherwise let's wrap it up uh i don't think so i think i covered uh, all my neurotic pixel pushing so i'm, I'm happy <clears throat> Uh, patch yeah and, uh, thanks thanks that you did this uh, uh, on your own <laughs> earlier today oh yeah yeah no problem no problem good um, work uh, thank you thank you um, yeah get is is second nature to me now uh, <laughs> uh, cool sorry well, Buzz, no, I interrupted you <laughs> I know I know it's like it's like wrap it up wrap it up and we're just Making jokes. Uh, Always going over time. No, you still got ten minutes, bro. Don't worry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I think I think we're in a good place. I think next week we can kind of start thinking about some planning. Pav sounds like he will hopefully be back, um, back in action, so he can help uh, rein us in a little bit. Um, and yeah, I, I think Dennis, you and I can keep working in parallel on this stuff, and I'll uh, I'll keep watching for the form builder uh, PR to go into review. But yeah, I think we're in a really good place. <clears throat> Great you know, work, that, everybody. Uh, t tomorrow, me and Pavel are sitting for the coming week to wrap it all up for 1.7. And I think we'll also touch 1.8 at that point. So uh, next time we're talking, I think we're going into uh, to the way towards 1.8. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. Oh, and, and uh, Boz, um, I'm happy to help uh, create whatever assets or gifts or anything like that that are necessary for Twitter posts and all that kind of stuff. Well, and I maybe guess I if you have some spare time today, <laughs> um, we're doing oh. something for Africa tomorrow, um, uh, a cool demonstration, and maybe we could still use some input or whatever, but I'll shoot you those messages. Uh, you still got a whole day ahead of you, so... <laughs> Yeah, I'll see. I'll see what I can do. Um, I'll just yeah, shoot you a message if necessary. Uh, just just no, so no, you know, for sure, for sure. And and if not, um, I'll do it definitely. So we can have some stuff for the announcement for this, which would be nice, just to have some cleaned up. Make some uh, candy. <laughs> yeah, definitely, yes, definitely. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. If nobody has anything we, else, we're yeah, gonna wrap it one, up. One more thing. God damn <laughs> we it. should always. We should. <laughs> We should reach out to Ant Hans and uh, ask him to do. Please start uh, doing those release gifts uh, once more. I'll uh, reach I, out to I, Hans tonight and see if he's willing to juggle thirty six kids and do new memes. <laughs> <laughs> Probably got some energy from that, like a little bit of insanity from from the uh, the energy from the kids. Maybe it'll it, it'll be uh, inspiration. It was so nice having uh, having those gifts back in the days, and I'm not I'm not sure when uh, when he stopped doing that, but I really enjoyed it every when time. Kid I... thirty four came around the yeah. corner. Yeah, number thirty four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll I'll do that for you, Dennis. I'll I'll shoot him a message and uh, and see if he can uh, can create us a nice little uh, meme for the coming week. Thanks. That's uh, that's on my to do list. All right, that was it, Dennis, or got one more thing? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm good. All right, then thank you, everyone, for attending. Once Actually, more. one more thing. All right, I'm go joking. for it. Right? No. <laughs> no, no, now you have the floor, mate. You got nine minutes. Go for it. I was, I was, I was, I was literally joking. Yeah, no, but, uh, now you got the floor. Nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> good work, everyone. Thanks. All right. Thanks uh, as well. Everyone, have a good day, and uh, thank Cheers, you. Guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. For too long, we've relied on trusted third parties to process digital payments. The world is changing and so are your customers. As cash payments decrease, digital payments become the standard. But existing apps charge transaction fees and lack privacy. BTC Pay is a Bitcoin payment platform. It gives control over your business back to you, helping people achieve financial freedom with donations, payments, and more. Help your family and onboard your friends. 
Use BTC Pay to host multiple stores and become a payment platform of your own. While the world changes around you, stay in control of your finances. It's simple to use, censorship resistant, and completely free. This is more than a payment platform. It's transforming digital payments as fast as the world around us.